Welcome, welcome to Studio 58A live here at the Jamaica Information Service or discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I'm your host and Julie James Sawyers. Thank you to everyone joining us online, wherever you are around the world. We appreciate it very much. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and comments so we can put them to our guest for today. And like how we have you, do us a favor and share this video with a friend or 20 or so or more so that we can have a lively discussion for today. Now in studio with us, we have foster care officer from the Child Protection and Family Services Agency's Southern Region, Mrs. Tanika Casanova-Durant. Welcome, Mrs. Casanova-Durant. Thank you for having me, Mrs. Sawyers. It's good to be here. It's our pleasure to have you. All right, so for today's program, we will be discussing the National Foster Care Program, and we'll also be looking at Foster Care Week, which is coming up in a very, very short time. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that a little later, but we're going to start <coughs> off with finding out more about the National Foster Care Program. But before we get to that, we're going to ask Mrs. Durant to tell us more about what foster care is all about. Okay, so foster care is actually the legal process whereby a child who is a ward of the state is placed in the care of someone who is not his or her biological parents, right? So these persons are approved by the child care, the, the child protection and family services agency, sorry, as foster parents. So we place these children in the, the, the care of these approved foster parents. Uh, the, the foster care program is one of three uh, what we call life program initiatives by the agency. That's the acronym for living in family environments where children, instead of being placed in residential child care facilities, they are actually placed in family based environments. For example, the family integration program or the foster care program. OK, what's the difference then between foster care and adoption? Okay, so foster care, as we said before, um, it's 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 a legal process, right? But foster care is is actually short term, medium term, can be long term at times. Uh, the major difference is that the biological parents retain their rights as it relates to to foster care. So the children. They know their parents, we know where they are, and we maintain contact with the family members of these children who are wards of the state. In adoption, the rights and responsibilities of the biological parents are transferred to the adoptive parents. So that is a permanent arrangement as opposed to foster care, which can be temporary. Okay, so what are some of these rights that you're referring to that the parents would have as it relates to the foster care system? Okay, so for parents of children who are in foster care, they have the right to maintain family contact with their children. And one of the things that is very, very important to us as an organization is for the children who are in state care to maintain contact with their families because they do need to have a sense of identity to say, okay, this is mommy, this is daddy, and so on. So we do facilitate what we call family visits at the Child uh, Protection and Family Services Agency as it relates to children who are in the foster care program. These visits are organized by us as, as children's officers, um, facilitated in office, supervised, or external to the offices, whichever environment is more convenient. And so we do respect the rights of, of the parents to see their children, to know that they are okay, and for the children to have have contact with them. So whilst the agency acts as the legal guardian for the children, we do not exclude the biological parents. But what we do, we work with them to try to get them to the place where they can now be able to regain um, the care of their children. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who exactly would uh, be eligible uh, to be placed in foster care? So when a child comes into the care of the state as a result of abuse, neglect, etc., once they are placed on what we call fit person orders, and that's an order that is made by the court, um, and that actually 
that, that child now becomes a ward of the state, right? Once that child comes into our care, we do our preliminary assessments and we look at, for example, factors such as the background of, to the case, health factors, education, etc. And each child, we develop what is called a care plan for each child that comes into our care. And that will determine where the child is placed. So we try to have a best fit um, to ensure that the best interest of the child is protected. So based on our assessment, we we'll say, okay, this child is best suited to be placed in foster care because this child has family members who want to retain contact with the child and they're opposed to adoption, etc. Or we may say, um, based on our assessment, this child is best would be best um, placed in, in family reintegration placement with relatives, etc. So it's based on our assessment as children's officers or as social workers when the child comes into care, based on our finding and, and the, the plan stated in the child's care, child's care plan, sorry, then we determine what is the best fit for this child. Okay, so you've been referring to best fit. Mm -hmm. How does one become a foster parent? What, what best fit are you looking for? Okay, so what we are looking for, we are looking for persons who are committed to the child rearing process. First and foremost, we're looking for persons who love children. We're looking for persons who want to inspire and give hope to a child who, and a family, to a child who otherwise would not be living with family members. Uh, other things that we look for, persons must be between the ages of 25 and 65 years old. Uh, we do process single persons as well as couples. The accommodations must be suitable to accommodate the children. The persons must be gainfully employed, live in a stable community as well. They must be willing to work with the Child Protection and Family Services to seek to safeguard the best interests of the children because each child in the foster care program is assigned a caseworker or a foster care officer who works with the child in the foster care placement and works with the biological family as well to ensure that the, ch the placement of the child is, is, is a best fit and achieves the optimum growth and development that a child can achieve in that placement. So that person must be willing to work with us. So for example, whatever recommendations are made, if the social worker assesses the case and say, you know what, this child can benefit from you know, psychotherapy based on the background and so on, the foster parent must be willing to come on board and, and work with whatever recommendations that are made by the psychologist or the, the social worker. The person must be willing to attend various trainings that we have because uh, the children, as I said before, who come into our care, some have been victims of abuse and neglect and desertion and all of that. And they do have psychological issues dealing with that could impact negatively on the placement. So we do empower the foster parents, giving them tools and building their capacity in terms of how best to to parent these special children that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what, what does the process entail? Okay. So, so pers for persons who are interested in becoming foster parents, they would collect an application form from any of our parish offices. Uh, that application form must be accompanied by um, the, some passport size pictures, notarized or certified by Justice of the Peace. They, they must submit as well refer, two letters of recommendation mm -hmm. um, from various persons who are listed on the application form. For example, Justice of the Peace, senior teachers, lawyers, etc. Um, for persons who are over the age of 65, they must be willing to submit to us a medical to prove that they are equipped, able bodies and so able bodied and so on to take care of the children. The persons must also submit a police record because one of the things we must ensure is that the persons that we are placing these children with are persons who are law abiding citizens and persons who are of good moral and legal standing. Yes. So these applications 
are submitted as I said before to the parish offices. Once we receive those and the approval is granted, the initial approval is granted, then the persons will undergo, the applicants will undergo training by the, the, the agency and we will of course come into the communities, do our checks and balances. We do a home assessment as well. Uh, there's an interview aspect where we speak to the applicants and all the members of the family to get their feedback as it relates to uh, how other members of the household feel about a foster child coming into the placement. So all of those are, are factored and that application is then sent to our regional directors for final approval or for review. Okay, so on average, how long does this process take? Okay, so this process can, it, I think it, on average, about three weeks. It could take less, it could take longer, depending on, because I, I outlined a few steps. Right. And each step requires some action by the applicant. So if, for example, I show you an, app, uh, an interview with an applicant and that person is not available until two months' time, that will impact on the time that it takes to process an application. So on average, I would say three some months, give and take. Yes. Okay. So what exactly is required of the foster parents? So I, I... I'm picking up from what you've been saying before that the whole process is is with the aim of of the best interest of the child for right. growth and development. But what is expected of the foster parent? So the foster parent is expected to play the role of the parent in collaboration with the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, which provides additional support. So the, the foster parent then would be expected to attend, for example, PTA meetings, would be able to ensure that the child receive proper medical care if needed, that um, whatever additional support is necessary um, is provided to that child. So so th what I normally tell foster parents is that, hey, this, this child is, is special. Treat this child as you would your own biological child, right? So, so that's basically the, the, the expectation in a, in a nutshell. Okay, mm -hmm. I like that. So for anyone who, before we get to that question though, uh, how many persons or families uh, do you have in the program? Okay, so currently we have over 800 foster families in the island. And uh, those families are serving about 952 foster children. So some families have more than one. You know, child. Okay. Right. So we have uh, persons fostering up to three, four children. Yes. So we do have a number of our, our children in the foster care program. And I must say that the children in foster care in this island are doing exceptionally well. Okay. Exceptionally well. So I must commend all our foster parents across the island for the exceptional work that they have been doing with the children. We are seeing results and we are very, very proud of their their inputs. Okay, what kind of results? Results. Are you referring to, yes. Okay, what comes ready to mind is our national CSEC award sermon that we had we held recently. We we were I mean we, we honored a number of our our children who attain passes in four more CSEC subjects. We have children who are attending colleges and universities across the island. We have ex-wards who are professionals in their own right, lawyers, doctors, etc. So when you see those things, you you realize the impact and the, the spread that the foster care placement um, is having on the children of this nation. And we are very, very happy about that. Okay, that sounds excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So what's the responsibility of the state now? After the training and mm -hmm. all of that, what, what else is, is required of the state as it relates to the foster care system? Okay, so the state acts as the legal guardian for the child. So we... A, a caseworker is assigned to each child in the foster care program. That caseworker ensures that the child is well taken care of. So we have a, a standard of care that we adhere to um, as it relates to, you know, what we expect to see when we visit the foster care placements. We visit the homes on a regular basis. We visit the, the schools. Um, we maintain contact with biological families, as I said before. So the, the, the role of the state is that of providing the necessary support that is necessary to maintain the placements. If, for example, a child has special needs, 
we ensure that whatever resources are needed, the child is is you know benefits from those from those resources. So if they need to do a surgery or they they, they need to do some special procedures, anything like that, we take care and make sure that the children are are well taken care of. So we work with the foster parents and provide that kind of support, the financial support, the psychological support, whatever capacity building mechanisms we need to put in place to ensure that the placements are, are good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've been speaking about some wonderful things in terms of how the children are doing. That's the foster care children, lawyers, doctors, and, and all of that, and the families, wonderful families who have taken in up to like three or four children mm -hmm. and the agency has seen it fit to commemorate foster care yes. week tell me more about that yes. and, and why is it that, <laughs> that you're commemorating yes foster, care, foster week. care week so every year the child protection and family services agents we have foster care which is big excitement and not niceness in the organization right because it is it, it's an opportunity for us to celebrate our exceptional foster parents to highlight the the achievements of our foster children and to let to encourage persons to come on board with us partner partner with us um to improve what is an exceptional what we call the flagship program in the organization so we um if i may just go through the the, the week of activities that we're having now sure before you touch mm -hmm. the week of activities though give us an idea of when foster care week will be so this year right. foster care week will be held february 10th to the 16th okay mm -hmm. okay what's the theme for this year the theme is uh, give love inspire hope foster a child Okay, yes. I like Inspire Hope. Yes. I do beautiful, too. <laughs> beautiful. All right, so what what are the activities that we can we can look out for? All right, so the activities. So this Sunday, we kickstart the week of activities with our national church service, and th that is going to be held at the Ocherius Baptist Church, starting at nine a.m. Okay. We also have other church services across the island. So, for example, we have a church service at the Savlamar Pentecostal Church starting at 10 a.m. We have another one at Waltham Park New Testament Church of God in Kingston starting at 8 a.m. And there's another ch uh, church service being held at the Fellowship Tabernacle in Mandeville, and that starts at 10.30 a.m. This year, we are partnering with the Jamaica Musical Theatre Company and... Uh, in, in hosting, well, well, the, there's a special production called, called Annie that deals with foster care and adoption. And we are also coming on board, going on board with the Jamaica Musical Theatre Company. So a number of our staff members will be in attendance at that production later this, um, sorry, on the 10th of February, starting at one o'clock at the Philip Sherlock Centre for the Performing Arts. And we'll also be promoting the foster care program there. We have a number of activities. So we have Foster Care Mingling St. Mary on the, the 11th of February. Mm -hmm. On the 12th of February, we have a positive parenting program at, at the National Youth Service in St. James. We have a community walkthrough in Sandy Bay on the, the 12th as well in Hanover. On the 13th of February, we have another positive parenting program in Trelawney. That starts at 9.30 a.m. at the NYS office. We have foster care meeting and training at the Southern Mar Methodist Church in West Milan on that date as well. Outdoor promotions, a de-stress and empowerment day at the City of Refuge. Um, child care facility starting at 10 a.m. for foster parents. It's a whole gamut of activities. I said before, it's a whole panacea, beach trip, walkthroughs, love stops, booze, all kind of nice days. So as I said before, foster care week. Prayer, breakfast, movie night, all kind of things. So the week is just filled with activities across the island. And I'm sure that persons will be hearing sound bites and various advertisements and so on coming from the agency as it relates to foster care. Because we do take this opportunity to promote the program during this the, the week. Mm -hmm. So we'll be seeing persons on the road as well as hearing sound bites over the media and so on. Okay. So how, how can the public participate in this week of activities? Well, um, I had mentioned a number of activities. I'm not sure if persons were taking note of what was happening in their locals, but they can call. There is a child protection and family services agency located 
island wide in each parish. So mm -hmm. persons can call the, the, the respective parish offices and find out what is happening during foster care week and how they can participate in whatever activities that are happening in their local. Okay, so for persons who are interested in signing up mm -hmm. to be foster parents, remind us how they can go about doing that. Okay, so the applications, they can access application forms on from our website and that's www.cpfsa.gov.jm or www.childprotection.gov.jm. Um, they can also visit our parish offices for application forms or they can call our head office, corporate office at 948-284122 for further instructions. Okay, what about your social media presence? Yes, we are on Twitter, we are on, we are on Facebook, we are all over the place. So we, we um, I think it's at CPFSAJM. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have a presence on social media as well. Okay, We're so there. persons can look out for what's <laughs> yes, happening yes. during the week. Great, right. great, great. So what would you say to encourage someone to support support the CPFSA's efforts and to sign up to become a foster parent? So so foster, it, the research has shown, Mrs. Sawyers, that children do well or, or do better in family-based environments than in residential care. It is very unfortunate that we have so many children in living in residential care across the island, I think over 2,000, for various reasons. And we want persons to come on board with us as an organization to provide a home and a family for those children who are um, available for foster care. And the good thing is that we have not only the regular foster care for quote-unquote normal children, but we also have what is called kinship foster care where persons who have relatives, children who are their relatives who are in care, they can come on board with us and agree to foster their relatives. We call that kinship foster care. So they can come as well. And there's also what we call therapeutic foster care. So for persons who have special skills, if for example you're a psychologist or um, or so, and you think you, you have what it takes to parent a child who, you know, poses some behavioral challenges or so on, we do encourage that if you are in the medical field and you think that you have the capabilities to foster a child who is HIV positive or so, we encourage persons to come on board and do that as well. So. The, the, the program, we have seen the results and we see the impact that it has made, positive impact that it has made on the children. Children are in need of homes and families and we want to encourage persons once you are able um, and you're willing to come and speak with us and inspire hope in the children, share some love and foster a child or two or three or four. Or more. <laughs> Is there is there a limit? Is there a limit as to the number of children yes. that a family can adopt? Can Ad foster foster, foster four? My apologies. Four. Can foster four? Mm -hmm. It's four. Okay. All right. So we have a question. Okay. Mrs. Durant from Mercha Booth. She's watching from Brooklyn. Okay. Hello. New York. <laughs> And she's asking, welcome, Mercha. Thank you for tuning in. Mercha is asking, what if a person is coming home to reside in Jamaica mm -hmm. and had reached pension age and would like to adopt a child? Would they be able to do so? Okay, so persons who are over the age of 65 are able to, to foster. Did you say adopt or foster? Well, the person said foster, mm -hmm. but we can talk about adopt rather, but we can talk about fostering because, yeah, a child. That, there's a clear disparity because if the person is interested in adoption, that's a totally different program, okay. right? So um, not for adoption, but if persons are, are, are wanting to foster, then if they're over the age 65, we do look at the, the, their physical competence, mental competence, um, and whether there is a presence of strong family support and the persons can be, can, we can assess to see if they, they are able to foster. But we do consider, we do take those applications and we do process okay. for persons over 65. Okay, so in terms of the adoption, uh, where can we direct persons to go if, if they have questions? The, the adoption unit okay. of the agency. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Well, Mercer, I hope that we answered your question. And we want to also say hello to Karen Oliver, who just tuned in. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And we have in studio with us today foster care officer from the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA's Southern Region, Mrs. Tanika Casanova Durant. So, Mrs. Durant, we're going to wrap up now. Uh, remind us when will Foster Care Week be commemorated and the theme and all about the niceness that you, you were telling us about earlier. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Foster Care Week this year will be celebrated February the 10th through to the 16th. And we have activities across the island over that time period. We kick off activities with our National Church Service. The major one is at the Otrius Baptist Church. We start at 9 a.m. Persons are welcome to come on board to come and attend the service with us and help us to celebrate the, the foster parents across the island. I must take this opportunity to say Thank you so much on behalf of the Child Protection and Family Services Agency. Your worth and work is invaluable, and we just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. We do have activities to show our appreciation uh, for the week, but just in case, we want to just ensure that you know you are special to us, and we love you for what you are doing for our children. So there are various activities taking place taking place across the island as was said before and we encourage persons to participate but even more so if you are not yet a foster parent and you meet all the requirements and the criteria that was previously stated please speak to us at the child protection and family services agency and help to just inspire a child and share some love and foster a child today okay can we get a number for the head office the numbers are 948 Two eight four one to two. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Mrs. Casanova Duran. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Yes, <laughs> so it's good to be here. Yes, and it was good to have you. And we want to wish you all the best for the upcoming week of activities. Thank and you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and we want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in to our discussion for today, especially those of you who sent in questions. And if you sent in a question and we didn't answer it in today's discussion, uh, don't worry. We will be going through afterwards and we will be answering the questions. And if you didn't participate, you can still send in your questions and we'll answer them for you. Our audience plays a major role in our show. So if there's anyone in particular that you'd like to see in studio with us, let us know and we'll do our best to have them in studio as soon as possible. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Jamaica Information Service to see who will be in studio. We do this every Thursday and sometimes some other days, but generally on a Thursday, live on Facebook. And I've been your host, and Joey James Sawyers. This has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you so much for joining us, and please do enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>